Let's go to Genesis, the first chapter. We're at day three. Day three. That would be verses nine, Genesis 1, 9 through 13. Here's what a lot of people don't understand. It's really important. Days 1, 2, and 3 is one half of the week of restoration of creation. Do you understand that? It's the first half. There's going to be a second half, 4, 5, and 6. These are two distinct differences. Day 1, 2, and 3, there has never been any days like them, nor shall there ever be this side of heaven. Let me tell you why. Because days 1, 2, and 3 existed without the solar system. There is no way to understand that. They Theologians call these, days 1, 2, and 3, the days of God. Because there's no other way to count it for them. When we get to day 3, we're at the last day of the first half. We have a, 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 a moving of God upon a chaotic earth of verse 2. In day 1, the light separates the darkness. In day 2, the waters are divided. In day 3, we've got something really going because he's going to change the inorganic to organic. You know why you know why you have day one, two, and three? Because in Genesis one, two, the earth was uninhabitable. Isaiah forty five eighteen. So days one, two, and three is getting the earth ready for what? Habitation and inhabitation, agreed? Well, you just read four and five and six and you got it. So, in my introduction, I said at the end of day three, the first half of restoration of creation was completed, and we have moved from inorganic to organic matter because now we're ready for day four, five, and six, the earth to be inhabited. I can't tell you how important that is. You say, well, to me, I, I don't really grasp what you just said there, Ron. Well, it falls under Deuteronomy 29, 29. I wrote it on your paper. The secret things belong to the Lord our God, day one, two, and three. But the things revealed belong to us and to our sons forever that we may observe all the words of this law. Just some things. You say to him, well, how do you explain days one to it? I don't, I, how, how could I? Our, there's no science that could ever figure that out. Because all of our science comes off a solar system. It's a unique time, and we've tried to explain that. I want to show you four things. On day three, God does a double work. On day three, he does a double work. You know this every time you find in a day when it says God said. Now watch this. In verse 9 and 10, we have the first work because God said, let the waters below the heavens, the expanse, the waters below the heavens is, is the word idea of expanse, be gathered into one place. You know what that refers to? Boundaries.
Then God said, let the waters below the heavens or the expanse be gathered, that's a niphel, into one place, boundaries, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. I told you that when this little phrase, it was so, means it was decreed, and it means that what was discussed at the Eternal Life Conference with God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit in eternity past is now plain, coming plain out into human history. You understand that? You've got to pay attention to this stuff. It was so, you go like, well, I don't know what that means, so you skip it. <laughs> don't do that. Don't do that. It was so means it was decreed, which means at some time earlier it was laid out as a plan and now it's coming to fulfillment. You understand that? Who said that? Who said, and it was so? God. Now there's another thing I call your attention to. See the word let. That's justice. Let. It's found in every day of creation. You don't pay any attention to it. It's just a little old word, let. But you should pay attention to it. Because it goes with, God said, let, and so it was so. God has to be faithful to his own word. Think about that. He's, he's sovereign and is obeying his own word. Once it, was in, once it was identified as the plan of God, he has to go according to the word. Did Jesus have to go according to the word? The Holy Spirit have to go according to the word? So does God. Once, it's put, once he decrees something, once it's put down into a form and a plan, and he signs off on it, He's got, he's got to obey it too. I'm just trying to connect three ideas. God said, let. And so it was. You understand that? Well, after you hear this stuff about a hundred times, you'll get it. Okay? Just introducing the idea... This word let is used on every day. If you study, just pay, pay attention to the word let. Now, you'll not always find the word it was so. In fact, I wrote down it's found on day two, day three, and day four, and day six. It's not used on day one or day five. How about that? How about that? This word decreed. So when he says, when it says God said and then let and it was so, that's big time stuff that was in the plan that's now laid out that's essential for the earth to be inhabited because that's the goal, is it not? Mm -hmm. Okay. See, you've got to keep everything in perspective. You've got to keep everything out front of you. Let the dry land appear, and so it was decreed. And God called. Now, every day he has had divine vocabulary. Remember, the word call means divine. He's calling something by a name that you want to remember. God called is a, is a divine vocabulary. He gave it to you on day one, two, and three. Listen to me. The word called, will ne you'll never see it again. It's done. Not on day four, not on day five, and not on day six. And do you know those things that he called and said, this is what they are named, are still, people still call them by that? People who don't believe in God, don't believe in the Bible, don't believe in the church, they still use these terms. That's interesting. It is to me. In the second work, on day three, is verses 11 through 13. 
the second work. Then God said, let the earth, which is dry land. See, if you paid attention, you found out that the earth, he now calls dry land. See, we have an earth in verse 2. We have an earth in verse 1 and 2. Now he changes the idea of the earth. He changes the whole idea of the earth. He now calls the earth dry land. What's the rest of the earth called? If one portion of it is called the, of the earth is called dry land, what's the rest of the earth called? How about wetland? Do you know what's under the seas and the oceans and the streams and wetland? You understand? In the story of Jonah, over the boat, down at the end, of, rolls down a mountain, seaweed wraps around his head, this big sea monster comes along, <clears throat> swallows him. Takes him on a three-day and three-night trip to where he's supposed to go on his mission trip. Right? Ran the opposite way, the Lord picked him up and sent him back. Right? And he didn't, didn't have to pay at all. Isn't that interesting? It's a free trip. Inside of, well, I don't want that trip. Nah. Sent him back, put, sent him, and, and listen what it says. And we got him back to where he started. This, the sea monster rise up and spit him out onto. Thank you. Guess where that word came from? Day three. Isn't that interesting? They called it the dry land. Part of the earth. Yeah, well. Then God said, let the earth dry land sprout. That's a hip field, causative. Vegetation, plants yielding seed, fruit trees bearing after their kind introduced a new idea. It's called min, M-I-N in the Hebrew, and it means species in the English. Yeah. With, seed, with seed in them on the earth, and so it was so. Reproduction of food. The reproduction of food. Is that, is that what that is? Of course that's what that is. And the earth brought forth, he filled, vegetation, plant yielding seeds after their kind. Right? The trees bearing fruit was seed in them after their kind. Species. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening, there was morning, words that we picked up from vocabulary earlier, day, from day one, vocabulary, this is the third day. Remember we picked up, oh, that's all right. See a double work. You see that double work? Well, I wrote it so you wouldn't miss it. Point number two. The second day gave boundaries to the water of Genesis 1-2. From above and below the expanse. On day three, that was on the second day. On the second day, God gave boundaries to the water of Genesis 1-2. He called it above and below the expanse. That thin line. Remember we talked about that. On day three, he gave boundaries to the water below the expanse. To the dry land called earth and seas. The water below boundary will continue until the flood of Noah in Genesis 6 through 9. Then the geographics, ge the geographics of the dry land and the sea will change for your civilization and mine, the post-Diluvian civilization. Change. I mean dramatic change. You can read about this. You can read about this. In Psalms 
95, verses 5 and 6, Psalms 104, 5 through 9. Notice I bold printed 6 and 9. When you read it, you'll see it. I don't have time today to read it. And Jeremiah 5, 22. The World Book Encyclopedia, which only a few of us know about, says that the world is really one huge ocean broken here and there by islands that we call continents. Isn't that interesting? But that's the post-Diluvian world. That's not the antediluvian world, and it's not the world of day one, two, and three. I ask a question, who is actually in charge of climate change on the earth? Apparently, this is a, a, a great dispute today. The government, at least ours, the Western world think they're in charge. The Eastern world thinks we're nuts, and rightly so. Who's in charge of climate change? Well, listen, you should read these passages on your own. Job 38, 4 and 8, 11 through 12, 18 through 40, and the 40th chapter, verses 1 and 2, when God finally sets Jonah down and says, Jonah has all these questions. God said, it's time for you to shut up and listen. <laughs> You've listened to everybody but me. All your friends have come along and got you all stirred up. And, and you've, got, you've got all these questions. Listen, why don't you just sit down and learn? And so God says to him, in Job 38, he says, where were you, were you? Let me ask you a question, Job. Because Job's got all these questions for God. Why are you doing this to me? Why am I doing this to me? Well, let me ask you a question to get the guy. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? You know? An answer like that, we would probably say something like, well, I was in my father's eye, the gleam of his eye or something. Where were you? Well, you know, I was. Pay attention to what he said, though. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? And that's what we're studying. Chapter 42, verse 3. Job responds, Therefore I have declared that what I did not understand, things too wonderful for me, which I did not know. You know, if you'd pay attention to God and what he speaks, if you'd pay attention to what God writes and what he writes so eloquently, it'd clear up a whole lot of your questions in life. You just don't study the Bible. That amazes me. Maybe, maybe you've just grown up with something that is of no value to you today. The most valuable thing you can put in your hand today is the Word of God. But it won't be of value to you unless you read it to understand it and believe it. That's what I'm telling you. Jeremiah 5.22 is a wonderful read. God who sets the boundaries for habitation. The earth is the Lord's and all that it contains. Paul is quoting Psalms 24, 1 and 2 out of 1 Corinthians 10. On your, on your paper... Marion, what does point three be? What does point three say? Yeah, circle everything under point three and write home study. Write home study. Write home study. Next week, take a few minutes to review the resolve of the water issue of days one, two, and three. 
That's going to take more than I can give you today. I want you to read that. I want you to read that. I want you to do a personal study on it. So, I guess I'm at point four. Does point four say God's second work of the third day? That's, that's where we are. God's second work on the third day produced mature vegetables and fruit trees with self-perpetuating seeds. Agreed? I mean, I just read that. I mean, I, that was the second work he did. The answer to the question of the old adage, which came first, the chicken or the eggs, is resolved by that, isn't it? The mature came first. Right? All right. Even though I don't have chickens on that, that day, you know what I'm saying? I'm just making a point. Note that both works done on the third day, on the third day, both works on the third day, listen to me now, were said to be decreed. And so it was. And it was so. You see, both of them were decreed. It's the last day of any days like this, and now we're going for from inorganic to organic. Do you know, after we, we are introduced to another idea then, and that is species. They farm this way today. Think how old that is. This is the way people farm. Now, the average person may not know the difference between wheat and oats and barley, but a farmer does, and a farmer kid knows. Even though they're all parts of grain. This thing is locked into science. And the flood or no flood is not going to change this deal. This deal, species. Right, Terry? Species. All of this was decreed and set into stone for the habitation of man on earth. By that he means dry land. This word decreed is used in verse 10 and verse 11. Both of these works establish a seed reproduction. The Hebrews called it min, M-I-N. We call it after their kind. And boundaries. Day three is full of boundaries. These boundaries are not changing. We learned, point number four, a new divine principle introduced on day three, a species. This still exists today if people are honest in science. This new divine principle was applied to day three, day five, and day six, which is interesting in itself. Day three, setting up inorganic to organic, a whole system. How is it possible that people would not believe in the creation story? It's the, it's the story of the origin. What science would not be worth is salt to get to the origin of something. You can't get to the origin apart from the Bible. So what did the enemy do? Took the Bible away from us in the public educational system. It's the dumbest thing you ever heard. And we just sat around and allowed it. How dumb are we? Morris wrote on this subject matter, the DNA of each kind is programmed to allow for a wide individual variation within the kind, the species, but not beyond the structure of the kind or its species. And when you cross those, when you cross outside of the species in, it is a mess. And it doesn't work. You can inside it, but you can't outside it. That's what the Bible teaches on it. It allows for evolution within its own species. 
Man, the evolutionists are nuts. They're just absolutely nuts. They, they, they've, they've got to have a thing in for God not to go back to original source. Would you give them all the answers? I don't know. The, it allows for evolution within a species. Paul wrote about this in 1 Corinthians 15, 58, or 38, when he said, God gives it a body just as he wished, and in each of its seed a body of its own. And Paul's talking about species. And he's talking about it in a way that people can stand out in the woods and see the little birds and see that they're different than the little flowers and the trees are you know. Listen, you go from creation to evolution. You don't go from evolution to creation. It's just that simple. This is not, this is not brain surgery here. This is just simple. Don't let people tell you different. It's not vice versa. These people don't understand origins. What science worth their salt wouldn't want to know origin? Unless the origin would screw up their whole deal. Who, who, who wouldn't want to know the origin, the true origin of the, of the COVID? What kind of science worth his salt one wouldn't want to know that and investigate it? Well, who cares what the politics is about when it's killing millions of people? I don't know. I'm just talking. Do you realize that all of this has been done, listen to me, by the word of God? <laughs> Every bit of it has been done by the word of God. Because it writes, he said. Who is the he? And what is the said when we read it? The word. Right? Right? I wrote this down. It's in verse 3, verse 6, verse 9, verse 14, verse 20, 24, uh, 26, and 29. You know what that covers? All six days. <laughs> Come on, church. Paul writes about this. Write this down. Romans 1, 20 through 23. And he, he issues a warning with it about creation. Romans 1, 20 through 23. Listen to 1 Peter 1.23. This is really smart what Peter did. Listen to what Peter wrote. For you have, you have been born again, not of seed which is perishable, but of imperishable. A seed, a seed that can reproduce as opposed to a seed that can't. You have been born again, not of a seed which is perishable, but imperishable, that is, through the living, abiding word of God. Why is it that the Bible is not the most important book of your life? Because your life came out of it. <laughs> You don't know what your life is or what it's all about apart from the Word of God. It is the origin. It is the book of Genesis. You should read Hebrews 5.12 and Romans 1.16. He says the gospel is the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes. There's one segment, the gospel of the Word of God. I mean, how, how important is the Word of God to your life today? It's the most magnificent book. I've got a lot of books. I've read a lot of books. I'm just one of those kids that love to read. I have never touched any book in my life that has been so transforming to my life as the Word of God. The B-I-B-L-E, that's the book for me. I can tell you that. Study it under the ministry of the Holy Spirit. 
Let it walk out the path of your life and you will find a wonderful life with it. Let the Word of God be that light unto my path. You will find marvelous things from it. Father, we're so thankful for these that have come our way to study with us the Word of God. We're looking at creation, Father, with a whole new insight. The devil has stole the whole information out of the origin because you have to go back to the Bible. We're, you have to go back to days that science can't even phantom. Days one, two, and three. And out of that, Garve, God carved out four, five, and six and put man on the earth. And what an earth it is, Father. Nothing like it. Nothing like it. Only one place better than earth in the planet system, according to the Word of God, is heaven itself. The third heaven. <laughs> and we've even, got, we've even got real estate there, Father. I want to thank you for that. Bless, Father, the gift and the giver. May we be wise in the way it's spent to further the kingdom to the uttermost parts of the earth. In Jesus' name, amen.